Cool. Thanks. Thanks for having me, and good, good afternoon. So, uh, again, my name is Henrik Berggren. I represent uh, LogPoint. We are a provider of uh, so-called SIEM solutions, which is log management and security analy analysis for, uh, for enterprises. So I thought I'd spend these 15, 20 minutes to give you a short introduction to what we do and how it works. And I was hoping to show you some demo as well, but I, I have some slide shots of screens instead. So that's going to work fine, I hope. So I'm not sure how many of you who are using uh, seeing solutions already. Um, I thought I'd just give you a small introduction to our company. We're a Scandinavian company with a European focus. That's how we usually present ourselves. Uh, headquartered in Copenhagen, Denmark, and with sales offices across Europe and working through partners, where SecureLink is one of our absolute primary partners across the European continent. Um, and I'll come back to some of the offerings that SecureLink provide uh, in relation to our product. So uh, we're about 100 people, um, very heavy on the development side, of course, um, and slim sales organization that provides support and pre-sale um, support for our partners, primarily. OK, so SIEM as such, it's, it's one of those American acronyms. Um, it stands for Security Information and Event Management which is, I guess, a fancy word for uh, you know, uh, sort of a souped-up uh, log management solution. Uh, and to differentiate this from uh, you know, what you typically call like a syslog server or something like that, this is a much more uh, powerful platform where you can do real-time analysis and alerting and a correlation between different sources and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much uh, the basics of it. And I usually compare it a little bit with this picture. This is a snapshot of the all the flights going over Europe and the Atlantic at some point in time. And of course, all these airplanes, they generate a lot of information, um, both uh, you know, anything from altitude and speed, uh, but also navigational data, weather data, and so on and so forth, engine data. All this stuff is really important to, to maintain the operation of this, if you like, system of airplanes flying around the globe. And also, this type of information is also, I guess, the first place you will go if you have a problem with something. It could be a problem, an incident, or even an accident. The first place you go to look is in the flight recording data, right? So this is one way of looking at logs that or you have all your devices creating all this massive amounts of information that is quite um, different in nature between these kinds of systems. Now, to keep control over this, you need some central point where you actually have an overview of what's going on and control and, and adjust as situations arise. And this is very true also for a CM solution, that you need to have people and processes in place that run this system and that can have, take action and, um, um, and uh, handle situations that, that occur in your, in your environment. And this could be your own staff. It could also partially or fully be SecureLink staff. SecureLink can provide even SOC services 24-7 that monitor your network and your application data like this. So it's, it's, I think it's a pretty good analogy. Another analogy is if you, if you buy a SIEM solution without having a process and people to support it, it's pretty much like buying an airplane without being able to fly it. It's going to look impressive on your driveway. Your, your neighbors will be very... Uh, jealous, but it's not very, very useful, right? So you need to have this in place. This is really important. The technical side, I think, is, is probably the least, uh, the place where it's the easiest way to get this up and running. This is where you need to put your focus on the people and processes around it. All right, so, so what is it used for in, in daily, daily operations? It, it's primarily used in three areas. These tools came out of the compliance area, where, where an increased requirement for reporting and auditing was, um, uh, especially in the 90s in the US, uh, after some um, turmoil in, in companies there. Uh, these systems became uh, more and more um, common in this area, and this is kind of the history of it. But since they are based on data that really shows what's been going on among users and components and applications, it's also a great tool for forensics, 
being able to do incident uh, um, investigations and so on, for, uh, other type of security activities. And the last, last uh, section of the IT operations, that's also a very common uh, area of usage because a, a tool like this is extremely uh, flexible and it allows you to quickly troubleshoot and monitor um, equipment and also do statistics, no, if nothing else, for planning purposes to see how your resources are being used over the day or the week or the, or, or the month or so to, to plan maybe for reinforcing some some, um, some resources, or if you want to move resources around, you can get some really helpful information from a system like this to see what other components a specific server, for instance, has been communicating with so that you don't break something when you move it. So there are a number of, uh, of uh, really powerful gains in these areas. Let's see. Hello. Next one. Right, so there are a number of market drivers. I'm sure during these two days here at SecureLink, you've heard about several of these, like GDPR, I'm sure you've mentioned, that's been mentioned many times, um, ransomware, um, CO fraud, and so on. And, and to be able to detect many of these attacks, if an attacker may, is able to break in and come into your internal network, get through your perimeter uh, uh, defense, if you like, um, you really need a system like this to be able to detect uh, strange behaviors within your own uh, environment. So this is where we, uh, you know, you see a, a quite wide um, range of, of, um, of areas where we deploy our systems and where the use cases also reside within customers. And that also, again, comes down to the flexibility in the platform. Of course, our focus on the CM platform, the actual platform as such. So we work with technology partners to enrich uh, our solution. So we work with several of the industry leading manufacturers in, in various spaces. And that could be anything from you know, being able to dig deeper into Windows, uh, let's say Exchange and the SharePoint logs, or it could be SAP um, analysis, where we've worked uh, for several years with a, with a German company that has now been acquired by SecureLink uh, called uh, IT Cube. There's an excellent solution called Agile SI. So, um, so again, um, threat intelligence, working with emerging threats and, and uh, emerge, uh, critical stack. So we try to enrich our... What are you doing with Boeing? Boeing, yeah, that's an interesting, um, um, really, partner of 3 or, or of uh, low, po low Point. We, they approached us in 2013 because they wanted to use Low Point as a uh, component in their solutions. So they provide solutions for the American well, the aerospace industry, obviously, but also for the manufacturing kind of SCADA environments. And they wanted to have a flexible log uh, management solution for that. But in order to be able to use this, they required us to be NATO certified. So they actually uh, helped us, uh, both in terms of manpower and funding, to get uh, common criteria certified. And that was done in Sweden by, by the Swedish Defense. So we got a full uh, EAL 3 plus certification level, as it's called. I think it's the highest level you can get as a commercial software company. So that's, uh, that's where we're coming with Boeing, yeah. Huh? It's higher than Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's the highest you can get, as far as I know. Unless you're going to get into a space shuttle or something. Cool. So um, the main principle of, of uh, low point then is that you, we, we collect information from a vast number of different kinds of sources. So it can be anything from network devices, operating systems, um, databases, and obviously applications. And it can also be other things like uh, security systems, like um, uh, entrance systems uh, for facilities and such. So um, as long as the information is, is available to be either sent over to, to the Logpoint solution, either by means of, let's say, secure copy or FTP, or with uh, an agent, uh, we can use it just like any other type of log, like syslog and, and so on and so forth. So we have a multitude of ways to get information into the system. And once we do that, we can also enrich it either with threat intelligence data, where I said we, we're working with critical stack and emerging threats. Um, or we can do database lookups or lookups to the Active Directory to enrich the data in the logs. And then we store them in the archive and uh, we normalize the logs. So we, we tag all the information in the logs is getting tagged. 
in a common taxonomy, in a common language, so that you can search across multiple platforms and multiple types of systems very easily using this, uh, this language that we have and, and the classification we have of the logs. And last but not least, all the logs get indexed, fully indexed, so you can free text search anything. You can just Google away in the logs, get very, very fast response times. So it's also a nice tool to work with interactively when you're doing maybe forensics or, or, or statistics of something. So that's kind of the basic uh, mode of operation. And that will then be able to turn into easy to read graphs and diagrams and statistics that can either be live dashboards that are updated in real time or in scheduled reports that be, can be emailed on a regular level like every day or every week or every month or so. So overall, it, it's, it's a very flexible, easy to use tool, uh, just to summarize it, that easily can visualize pretty much anything that you can put into those logs or files that we import into the system. Now, some use cases, I was hoping to show you some live demos here, but I, I'm going to go with some screenshots instead. So some, some very common use cases, I'll just look at some almost like sanity level type use cases. So, you know, basic use cases that are pretty much out of the box with LogPoint. And then uh, SecureLink obviously have more advanced and elaborate use cases they can discuss with you and also work with you to create custom use cases for, for your business. But some of the, um, some of the uh, general thinking is about the same. So you have some risks in terms of users and databases and applications. You have sources for those in terms of, in terms of the devices that we actually collect the logs from. That can be firewalls, AD, and applications, and so on. And then we have a number of use cases. And, and a very common use case is to look at, for instance, privileged users and admins to see what they have been doing and haven't been doing, uh, and follow up on that. Could also be uh, just look at um, users in general, um, uh, failed logins, uh, attempt to uh, break in with brute force attacks, stuff like that. Can also be looking to email. Uh, email the email system is typically one of the more central platforms in the company. And having a tool to be able to go in and, um, and both do analysis to see if there's strange behavior in the email system or if maybe some sensitive files have been emailed somewhere, or if there are just problems with the emails you need to troubleshoot, or just being able to confirm that someone has received or haven't received an email, maybe for legal purposes. It's, it's, it's a, a really nice tool for that. And then just forensics in terms of being able to search and do um, start wide and then narrow down and, and just spin the data around as you go along and search in a very interactive and easy way. So there, there are a number of, um, these are some of the kind of basic use cases that we see. And this is typically what the data looks like when it just comes fresh out of the systems. This is a, this is a mix, I think, of Windows and Kaspersky, maybe Palo Alto logs on this screen. It, it's very, very difficult to get any handle on what's in them, to be honest. So what we do when we do the tagging I refer to, is that we actually go into the raw logs and we tag all the information. We give every piece of information a logical name that then can be used to create the tables and graphs and, and filters and so on in a very smooth way. So from there, you can easily go to the next screen where you can visualize this, um, either in a dashboard again in, 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 in real time. So here we can have a look, for instance, for a help desk to have a look at locked accounts. This is a typical uh, tedious thing for many organizations to cope with. Um, maybe attempts to log into disabled accounts, former employees or whatever that is trying to go into disabled accounts, or failing to log into um, to, uh, using this multiple names on the same device. So maybe you're trying to break in. All those things are like out-of-the-box type solutions. Other things could be looking to the AD to look at uh, user creations, um, maybe administrators that are being created, or suspicious account creation where you have accounts that are very short-lived, maybe only lives for a few minutes. Why did you create that and then just take it away? What happened there? Um, other areas could be looking to file shares and SharePoint, looking at specific catalogs and folders and files that may, may be sensitive, but they want to keep an eye on who is accessing them and when. 
and or they may be trying to access a file or a file share they haven't access rights to. Why are they trying to access that? That, for instance, in uh, engineering companies where you keep CAD drawings like in this example, that can be very, very sensitive if you have staff trying to access stuff they're not really allowed to look at. Or if you try to copy things to removable, removable devices like USB sticks or external disks and so on. So uh, these are just some, some, like an idea of what you can do. Now, also for a help desk or for a less technical person, it's possible to create ready-made templates where you can easily search for specific things. Like here, we have an example of email, uh, where you can search for specific emails from a specific sender or receiver or, or whatever. So it becomes you know, an easy to use user interface. And last but not least, you can just go in as a forensics guy and just type, type something in free text. Like here, I just type Dropbox at the, at the top left in the search string. And I get some uh, Palo Alto logs here. And I can then turn them into a nice table where I can see the top 10 users that has pushed the most data up or down from Dropbox. I can set alerts that will tell me if uh, a user has tried to push more than 500 megs in an hour. Why is that happening? Let me know that. So those are just some, some basic examples on what you can do. So getting started is, is sometimes the, the question we get most about how do we get started with this. And our recommendation is that you start with a workshop. And uh, a recommendation from my side would be to um, uh, you know, engage uh, SecureLink uh, in a workshop where you, they will help you identify your specific use cases, prioritize them, and just get them get them done. And don't you know, try to over-engineer this and, and do too much at one time, but, but be focused and focus on, this, on, the, on those first use cases to get started, to get started in a good fashion. And again, the SecureLink consultants can give you a lot of advice in this area as well. So that's a really good, uh, good advice from my side. And um, the fact is that we have trained uh, quite a few low point consultants. I think it's probably around 30 at this point. Uh, and they can provide everything from license, just licenses, to installation training. They can run this as a service from an operational standpoint or a security services on top of that, all the way up to a 24 by 7 SOC services, secure operation center services. So you have a whole range of, of, um, of available options here that, that would, um, uh, depending on what you need, what your organization needs over time. So um, another way to st get started is just to try us out. Just download the free version from our homepage, have a look at it. And if you think it looks interesting, again, contact SecureLink for a closer discussion and uh, maybe set up a workshop. So that's, that's all available. So that's, that concludes my presentation. This was quite high level, I, I, I agree. So if you have more detailed questions, or want to see a demo, you can come to our booth. Or if we have any questions in the room, I can take them here now. Any questions from the audience? Yes? I'm just curious. In your previous slide, you said don't collect everything. Yeah. And then start from there. But then, you know, so why not, why not collect everything, you say? Right. So unless you have a plan, you know, if you just collect everything, you're just going to end up with a huge amount of data that you may not even have any use for. So if you instead decide the use case, what do we need to see, then that would in turn then um, dictate what log sources you need to define and also maybe how you need to configure those log sources. Just a simple thing like uh, a radio server can be configured in so many ways. And maybe the information you need to fulfill your use case, you need to reconfigure your radio server a little bit. So that's, that's really my argument. In terms of the amount of data, we don't license on the amount of data. We just license on the number of log sources. So we don't really care about the amount of data. But you know, uh, um, I think the other one is a better, it's a better approach to get success when you get started. Then you can always expand obviously, but I think you should try to keep focused when you get started. Because another thing that will happen when you s fire up a system like this in a typical environment is that you, you see so much stuff, it's re easy to get sidetracked. You get, you know, oh, look at this, okay, look, do this, and I can see this. So you need to have like a, 
like a game plan so that you keep keep focused during this first phase. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's my experience at least. That's my advice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, I guess I'm over time. Yes, or it's fine. Right. Thank you.